I invite you to grab your Bibles and turn with me to Ephesians chapter 6. To Ephesians chapter 6. And I'll be reading from the English Standard Version, beginning at verse 1 through 3. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise, that it may go well with you, and that you may live long in the land. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for these words. And we ask you now, Lord God, to teach us through these words. Open our eyes to see you. Open our ears to hear from you. Give us the courage to put into practice what you teach us this morning. For these things we pray in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Well, I have to admit to this morning that I was kind of wondering, should I even preach this message this morning? Because, well... <laughs> Other than my kids, I mean, old Jasper's just outside the door here, but uh, we have a number of kids missing this morning, and my kids have heard this stuff all before. And uh, But God hasn't spoken to me to do anything else different. So when God, as some of you know, when we've gone through experiencing God together, what does Henry Blackaby say in that s study? It's been a while, hasn't it? <laughs> One of the things he says in that study that if God has spoken something to you, or, and it's been a while and it's, he's been silent, then the question always to ask is, what did God say last to you? And go back and do that. And uh, so since God hasn't said otherwise, the last thing I heard him say was to preach this message, so I'll preach this message anyway. And uh, so maybe there's someone who needs to hear this online or someone in the future needs to hear this on online. But uh, So this relates more to kids this morning and to youth, but... Um, Maybe it's a good thing for us to hear as parents too and as and grandparents um, as adults too for how, how can we then support our children in these things? How can we support our grandchildren in these things? How can we support uh, as an auntie and uncle in these things? Um, not that the auntie and uncles or, or grandparents necessarily have a lot of authority over their grandchildren, but they are influencers still. Um, our grandparents actually make do influence kids a lot. And so grandparents are just as important as parents are. And uh, so I, I know for our own kids and my own life too, I, I loved going over to my grandparents while I was older. I used to love going to my grandma and grandpa Cabot's place because downstairs in the cellar was always this box of games. And so I'd always ask if I could play those games. And also grandma had buttermilk. I loved buttermilk. <laughs> my kids are going, oh, yuck. <laughs> It was one of my favorite treats to have going to Grandma's place. We only had buttermilk, and we got to go to Grandma's place. And um, so it was always good to go visit my Grandma and Grandpa. I have good memories of my grandparents. And I'm thankful for my, for my mom and, and stepdad as well, too. They've been great encouragements to, to, to us. What is a child? A small child is someone who can wash his hands or her hands without the soap wet. <laughs> How many of you parents and grandparents can relate to that? Tell your kids, when you wash your hands, you need to use soap. <laughs> How many of are my kids? How many times have we said that to you guys? You gotta use soap when you wash your hands, right? Infinity, yeah. <laughs> Less than 200. <laughs> okay. Well, I know with some kids, sometimes you tell them to wash their hands and they get it right away sometimes. Washing their hands all the time with soap, sometimes so much you have to tell them to stop washing their hands, <laughs> which is odd. Not that often that happens, but uh, yeah. There's one more main point I want to share with you this morning, and I don't have the remote sun, so you have to switch to the next slide for me. One main point, f and uh, may we encur be encouraged by this this morning, no matter your age. Um, and it is this, children 
honor your parents. We get that from verse 2 of Ephesians 6. Again, it says, Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise. These are such important words, I think, that we need to hear. Um, recently, I've been going through some of the old, the old Testament again, reading through what we call the Torah. That's the first five books of the Old Testament. And in there, it talks about some ways about how children are to treat their parents. In fact, the Old Testament goes so far to say that if, if a child is so rebellious against their parents, um, causing harm to their parents, uh, being absolutely outright rebellious to their parents, that the Old Testament law was to put their children to death. Pretty extreme, isn't it? We're not talking about one time when the, parent, the children didn't clean their bedroom. We're talking to extreme rebellion. Um, like we see sometimes, even today, uh, I don't know what it is, my generation and on, it seemed like it got worse and worse each generation for how children treat their parents. To the point where parents p- sometimes placate to their children. And, and it's a serious thing. So these words are important for children to hear. Um, not to be rebellious against their children. To honor your father and mother. That's what God's word tells. Now, with the new t- covenant in the New Testament, we don't do that today. We don't put our kids to death for extreme rebellion. Thank goodness, right? <laughs> There's a, there'd be a lot less people today if we followed the Old Testament law with that. But it also shows a bit of a sign of God's grace to us too, doesn't it? That even sometimes we're rebellious, God gives us multiple chances. And so it's good for us to hear that as parents too. Yes, children, you need to honor your parents. But parents need to make sure they take care of their children as well. And we'll actually next week be look with next week looking at the parents' relationship with children. So we'll be talking more about our, our role as parents and grandparents more. But this week again is on children. Honor. What does the word honor mean? What's that? Look up to? Okay. Respect? Yeah. Those were pretty close. But the Greek word here, I'm not going to say the word because I'm going to get it wrong. It's Greek is, hard wor- m- is a hard language to speak sometimes. But uh, anyway, the, the definition for the Greek word for honor here is this. To set a price on or a estimated value to. It doesn't make it much clearer, does it? But it speaks of value, doesn't it? That there's a value to it. Second definition to this word honor is to show high regard for. So in essence, honor is you see your parents and you see there's great value in your parents because of what they do for you and caring for you. Buying you clothes and food, taking care of you, spending time with you. So it's seeing that and honoring that. It's then saying, I have high respect and high regard for my parents because of the love and the care they show to me. So we're to honor our father and mother. It actually speaks back to Exodus 20, verse 12, which is one of the, gr- one of the, one of the Ten Commandments, which again was to honor the father and mother that the days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. There's a key point with that verse in Exodus 20, verse 12, and the verse that we just looked at now here in Ephesians chapter 6, that if children honor their parents, there's an outcome of that. Anyone want to know what that, bl- that is? A long life. It's blessing. It's gifts that God gives to you for honoring your parents. On the flip side, when children don't honor their parents, there's a curse upon them. And so it is an important thing for children to hear that it is important to honor your parents. A gentleman by the name of Jim Blevin, in preaching to his church one day about this very thing, shares this story. He says, One Mother's Day, I was preaching in another state, and during the Sunday school class, I told about one of the two times that I sassed my mother. Ooh, that doesn't sound too good, does it? Sassed his mother. One of the two times. (laughs) Probably happened more, but he can recall two of them. Anyway, here we go. Now, my mother is about 
four foot eleven inches tall, and I was approaching six feet. So you can kind of have the idea of a height difference there, right? So I towered over her. She told me to do something, and I made the mistake of telling her she wasn't big enough to make me, and stomped off. Ooh. <laughs> she told my dad when he got home from work. He took me into the back bedroom, and I sat, sat on the bed. He went through the tedious process of explaining the birth process. How a woman is never closer to death than during the final stages of birth. Of the pain, of the humili humiliation in the position a mother-to-be is in. And of the love she had for me to go through all of that. He recalls, of course, I was in tears by the time he finished. I started to go on with the class, but a lady in the audience asked, so you didn't get whipped? And he answered, oh yes, he did. Dad gave me the biggest whipping of my life, saying that it was to drive home that lecture he had just given. I think this story speaks well. I wish I had the wisdom of his father <laughs> in times when our kids have sassed him. Sherry. So I use that story because they're right. I remember going through that process, being there when Sherry gave birth to each of our kids. And I'll, I won't go into details of that because I, don't, I know she wouldn't appreciate that. But I'm sure if you are a mother, you've given birth to a child, you understand some of what has just been said here and probably even more to that especially the humiliation part of, of that whole process. It's a beautiful thing, but a very hard thing too. But Jim Blevin got it, not just because of the spanking, but also the lecture he got of what his mother went through to bear him, to bring him to life. It speaks then to of us to remember to honor our parents. And this speaks to us even if we're adult children. But there's some parts of what I'm about to share with you now that, yes, w some of these things we don't need to do as adult children, but the last one is something that all children, no matter of age, should do for our parents. But here's the first several ones that have to do with children who are in the household still, in, in the house. And uh, so certainly some of this changes when a child becomes an adult and is still under the roof. Um, I'm still trying to learn how to handle things for our son Caleb because he's under our roof still, under the rules of our house still, but he's an adult now. So how does that change? And so I know I wrestle with that a lot. Um, and I'm sure Caleb can see that I wrestle with that a lot. <laughs> so honor your parents first by obeying them. We're first to obey them. As we see again in verse 1 of Ephesians 6, children, obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. It's the right thing to do. Okay, we can click the next one, which is actually the, which is B, on your parents because it is the right thing to do. Now this is a caution and reminder for parents to be careful not to be abusive of our, ch of our children. Uh, there's no room for us abusing our children at all, especially when it comes to spanking or other ways of disciplining. Yes, we discipline our children, but... How we handle that is important, and we'll talk about that next week some too. But children, is, it is the right thing to obey your parents. What does it mean to, for it to be the right thing? Well, the Greek word here for right means this. It means pertaining to being in accordance with high standards. Ooh. We sometimes don't like hearing that, do we? We don't like hearing high standards for us, do we? And yet there are. It's actually interesting, as we look at the Old Testament law, there's some laws that God didn't abolish in the New Testament, but actually raised the standard. One of them in God's word is, in the Old Testament says, do not commit adultery. But in, in the New Testament, Jesus raises the standard and says, if you lust after another person, you've committed adultery in your heart. So that's the raise of the standard. 
Also, when God's word in the Old Testament says you're not to murder someone, Jesus raises the standard and says you're not to hate anyone. So actually, there's a higher standard in the New Testament for us as Christians. So parents are to have a high standard. Not an an unrealistic standard, but a high standard. I look at our society today, how would our society be different today if parents had a higher standard? Instead of parents trying to be buddy-buddy with their kids. Now, don't get me wrong. Parents can have a good relationship with their kids in that they have a friendship together. But the parents have to remember that they're still the parent. It's still the parent's job to raise the children up in a proper and good way. Unfortunately, our world today has is trying to advocate that to our government. And we need to be very careful with that. Yes, uh, God's word says we are to honor our government and obey our government, but the part of raising children has to do with the parents, not the government. Parents, it is your role to raise your children. To raise your children in the way God's word says. And then children again, following through with a standard that the parents give. And it should be God's standard. Not extras, but God's standard in the home. Yes, parents might need to give certain boundaries. Um, I remember when I first started in ministry, I remember uh, in one class in seminary, talking about how senior pastors sometimes need to give youth pastors in enough rope to do their work, but not so much that they hang themselves. <laughs> have, you, have you ever heard that phrase before? And it's true when it comes to parenting too. Children need to have enough rope, but not so much rope that they hang themselves. That's why I had known when I was in college, I went to Bible college, and they had certain rules. They had a covenant that they set, we had to sign, which said there's certain things that we wouldn't do while we're in college. And they did that as a means to protect those who were coming right out of high school and coming to college. Because what happens? For some who come right out of school and go to college and then move out of the home to go to college, well, we see what happens in a lot of university and colleges that aren't Christian, right? They get up into a lot of things and a lot of trouble that, that they th- should not get into. So it's good to have a standard and for children to obey the standard the parents give. Reasonable standards the parents should give. C, on your parents pleases the Lord. It pleases the Lord. If you turn with me to Colossians, just a couple books after, Colossians chapter 3, verse 20, it gives us this. Colossians 3, verse 20. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. That's why we've seen in two of the passages here now, too, that says that when you obey your parents, that there's a blessing for it, that it may go well with you and may, may live a long life. Again, though, too, Jesus, or God tells us here through the Apostle Paul that when you obey your parents, that the Lord is pleased with that. That's why God will bless you, because he's pleased with you when you honor your parents. D. Also brings you a blessing. I've mentioned this a few times already this morning. But when you honor your parents, it brings a blessing. And we've seen that already as we've looked at some passages this morning, especially Exodus 20, verse 12. Next, E. This comes to then now when we're an adult. The late relationship changes when a child becomes an adult. They're still a child to their parent, but the relationship changes. But this is important for us to hear, all of us. Because um, I've seen this happen in some situations, in some relationships, in some families, where the re- relationship changed when the par- child became an adult, but they didn't honor their parents still. They have done things that have caused strife for their parents. And so it's important even as adults for children, adult children to honor their parents. That is this, to take care of them and to consider advice from them. Turn with me to Mark chapter 11. I know we're doing a little bit of flipping this morning, but Mark chapter 11. Sorry, Mark chapter th- 7. 
verse 9 through 13. And he said to them, You have a fine way of rejecting the commandments of God in order to establish your tradition. For Moses said, Honor your father and your mother, and whoever reviles his mother and father must surely die. But you say, If a man tells his father or his mother, What you would have gained from me is Corban, that is, given to God. Then you no longer permit him to do anything for his father or mother, thus making void the word of God by your tradition that you have handed down and may such and such and many such things you do. This passage, Jesus is speaking to some religious leaders and speaking about how, you know, you've told people, adult children, not to care for your parents and saying that what's yours is the Lord's and so you need to give that to the Lord's instead of taking care of your parents. And Jesus is saying, now you're making a mockery of the law that you've been given because you're to take care of your adults, to uh, take care of your parents still. There's going to come an age for every child that their parents are going to get old and they're going to be at an age where they can take care of their parents. Um, it's one thing I, f- I really appreciate about some other cultures in, the, in our world where they don't ship off their, their adult parents to an old folks' home. Now, I'm not saying that some old p- people don't need a care facility. Some do, because some people can't physically take care of their parents with some f- certain physical problems. But when there's not physical problems, the children do need to take care of their parents. It's biblical to take care of them. I know from time to time, Sharon and I have talked about what it's going to look like once our parents are old and can't live on their own. How are we going to take care of our parents? Do we need to have a home in the future that has a in-law suite? So that way we're still close by so we can take care of them. And we don't know what the answer is to that yet. For when my mom is, is and stepdad are, are old and need help, and when Sherry's parents need help too, w- how do we care for them? It's important for us to ask that question. And for us as, as adult children to take care of our parents as they age. It is biblical. Also taking advice from our parents too. Now, this is an area I think we'd be careful about and we'll talk about next week too. Because sometimes adult, uh, um, when children become adults, sometimes their parents can overstep down sometimes and just give advice because they think that they should do it any, any every time. Not the case. Um, parents, we need to wait until our p- children as adults ask for advice. Sometimes, yes. Sometimes it's good to c- pull them aside and say, hey, I see you going in a bad direction. But generally, let them come to you and ask for advice. And it's good for us as children, as adult children, to go to our parents to ask for advice. Because they have wisdom and have lived life longer. So they have some wisdom that they can give to us. And it is honoring to our parents as adults to go to them when we need advice. So all of us, if our, cho- if our parents are alive today still, we should be c- taking care of them as they age and also seeking their advice as, as we are adults too. This leads to one point of action this morning. And that is to honor your parents by obeying them. If you are still a child, that is, you're a teenager, you're in grade school still, basically age 18 and under, or under age 18, then you need to honor your parents by obeying them. Even if you're in the home still, and you're over the age of 18, there's certain aspects of obeying your parents still until you leave the nest. But for sure, we need to honor our parents, no matter our age. It will change over time, but we're to always honor our parents. So let us then honor our parents. Again, I think about how different our culture would be today. It doesn't take long to hear things in the news or even hear things in our community of what's happening. We sometimes hear of, of, of teens and drug use, uh, going to parties and getting drunk, um, of kids being rebellious against their parents, swearing at their parents even, or even hitting their parents. Um, outright defiance. How would our world be different today if parents 
parented their children, and children obeyed their parents. I'd say socially, even in our world today, it would be a lot different. I think there would be a more understanding of moral values that God has given us. And society wouldn't be in the mess that we're in today. Now, I don't think that parenting is the only cause and problem of this and children's rebellion. There's other parts of it for sure too. But this is surely is a factor in it. So again, a reminder for us, all of us to honor our parents. Even parents who have been hard and difficult. Some of us have backgrounds of parents who have been abusive. And that's just hard, isn't it? But still honoring them because God asked us to. Doesn't mean we need to trust them in, in how they, because they treated us, but still to honor them. I want to give this one note as we close though to you. God's word talks about God being our father. And I want to speak to those who have been hurt by their fathers in the past. To know this, that if you have a father who is not like God, who has been abusive, and however he's been abusive, know this, that God is not like your father. He is our heavenly father, but he is a God who is kind and gracious. Yes, he does discipline us when we need discipline, but it's because he loves us. And his, his discipline for us is not abusive. It's corrective. Because he wants to be in the right relationship with us. He wants us to get right with him. So here's an encouragement to you this day. That no matter how you've seen your father, know that God, your heavenly father, loves you dearly. And it's my prayer that if your father's been abusive in any way, that if that father is alive today, that he will come to a point of humility and come to you and say, I'm so sorry for the way I've ha treated you. Please forgive me for the abuse that I have given this too is a reminder to you for those of us who are fathers, and I'm even preaching on myself too, to be an example of God the Father to our children. So do you want things to go well for you? Then honor your parents. No matter your age, yes, it's going to look different at every age, but honor your father and mother. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for these words that you have called us to do, to honor our father and mother at any age. And Lord, we do understand, even from your word, it looks different as time goes on. It's different from when we're a child to when we're a teenager to when we've left the house. But Lord, may we be a people that bring honor to our parents, even those who have been abusive, but in the way that is biblically a right to honor them. And Lord God, we thank you that you are our Father, our Heavenly Father. One who shows great love and kindness to us. The kind of Father that all fathers should aspire to be. Men who love their children and care for them. And love them in such a way to discipline them, to train them up in your ways, Lord God. Lord, as we've sung this song this morning too, what a Father... What a friend, what a savior he is. We thank you, Lord God, that you are the great father, our heavenly father. Amen.